Subdivision modeling is a method of representing complex curved smooth surfaces by creating a polygonal mesh of the shape and applying further subdivisions of regions of the mesh where required to better approximate complex curved surfaces. The resulting meshes are then smoothed with curves connecting the vertices of a mesh, producing a form with no sharp edges or creases. Subdivision modeling gives users another mode to create and manipulate 3D forms for any design field. The creation and editing modes of subdivision offer additional flexibility not found in other methods, such as NURBS and primitive solids modeling. Objects created in this mode are completely compatible with the Vectorworks modeling environment and can be combined with other objects and modeling techniques to fully capture a designer's intent. There's a lot to learn with this tool, but first the basics. To create a subdivision object, double-click on the Edit Subdivision tool. You'll be presented with a dialog box that offers a number of different starting shapes, or primitives, that you can use to begin working from. It's important that you choose the right type of primitive for the right job, but we'll get into that a bit later. To keep things simple, let's start with the sphere. Next to Subdivision Primitives near the top, choose Sphere from the drop-down menu. Each primitive has its own set of default values, some more than others. For a sphere, we only need to define a radius, so go ahead and enter 3 centimeters. Below, you'll see options for creating a primitive at a set of coordinates, which we can control if we uncheck Center at Next Click, but we want to place it manually, so leave this checked. Click OK, then click anywhere in the drawing area, and you should see a sphere primitive appear. If it appears too large, zoom out a little so that you have plenty of space to work in. Go to View, Standard Views, and choose Right Isometric. This will give us a good view of the object, and what we call the cage, or the special reshape handles that allow you to control the subdivision geometry directly. Use the Flyover tool to center the rotation around this object by first clicking just once with the Flyover tool on the middle of the sphere. Then, rotate slightly to the side to reveal the edges and points of the cage that were overlapping in the isometric view. Take note, see how the cage handles disappeared? This happened because we deactivated the Edit Subdivision tool, which is the only tool that will allow you to see and edit the cage when we activated the flyover tool. Double click on the subdivision object with the regular selection tool, or simply click the edit subdivision tool to bring the cage back up. There we go. The basic interface for editing a subdivision is simple. Click on the part of the cage you wish to move, then move it with the widget that appears. Hover over the various areas of the cage and notice the red highlighting. See how you can highlight individual edges, vertices, and faces as well? All of these can be used to control your geometry manually. We'll come back to this shortly. For now, click on one of the side faces of the cage nearest to you, like so. A control widget will appear. This is known as the 3D Dragger. It's called that, as to control your selection, you need only click and drag on parts of this widget in order to reshape the geometry. There are a few parts to the Dragger. The arrows control linear movement in two specific directions each, either in relation to the edge, vertex, or face you've selected, or in relation to X, Y, and Z on the current working plane. You're able to toggle which orientation via the last two sub-modes of the Edit Subdivision tool, Align to Cage and Align to Working Plane. To see this in action, go ahead and click on the blue arrow facing away from the center of the sphere you should see it turn yellow to indicate that it's currently active and being controlled by you directly. Move the handle both away from and back towards the other side of the cage. See how your movement is locked in this direction? That's linear movement, since we are currently holding one of the linear controls of the 3D Dragger. Also note how the geometry itself is moving with the cage, but isn't attached exactly to it. The cage only controls the general shape of the geometry as we have it set right now allowing for smooth and organic shapes to be created very quickly and suited for work where you're simply eyeballing what you want things to look like. You may notice a sort of jumping behavior as you move the dragger handles around. If this occurs, simply disable all snapping objects in the snapping palette, and movement in this editing mode will be smooth. You can also temporarily disable all snapping by holding down the tilde key, but if you're going to be editing subdivisions a lot, I recommend just disabling the snapping options completely. Click again to let go of the linear dragger handle. Then, click one of the thin arcs that travel between two of the linear handles, the red one in this case. This is a rotational control handle, and as you might expect, 
controls the rotation of this selected face. Go ahead and move it around to see how the rotation is locked to a certain direction. Click again to let go of that handle, and then click on the smaller, flat red surface that resides within the arc of the rotational control handle, the planar control handle. This control is a little more difficult to see. What it does is move the currently selected face, vertex or edge, along a single plane, perpendicular to the face in this case. See how you can move up, down, left or right, but the movement of the face remains flat along that same plane as it was before, not rotating off of it or moving away from it like it did with the previous two modes. After reshaping in this way, rotate around it a bit with the flyover tool if you like to see that the face we've selected stays aligned constantly when controlled with this transform mode. If you click the other colors of planar control handles, you'll see that they stick to other axes instead, same as you saw with the rotate and linear control handles. Finally, the small aquamarine ball at the center of the linear control handles is the screen plane planar control handle. That means that it lets you move it in any direction, but it's locked to your current screen plane or view. So if you look at it from the left, moving it left and right would move it forward and backward. But looking at it from the front, moving it left and right would move it left and right. This control handle is always relative to the screen of your monitor, effectively. These control handles will behave differently whether you select a face, edge, or vertex. Go ahead and experiment with that on this model now a bit if you wish. You will also find that you can select multiple edges, vertices, or faces by holding down shift and then clicking on additional parts of the cage, but we'll cover that in more detail later. A brief note, the second group of modes for this tool are only present when in transform mode. The first two will limit which transform controls you see on the dragger widget. The third will let you relocate the widget freely without actually reshaping the geometry when in the mode. This becomes useful in complex geometry where part of the model might obscure the control handles. Up until now, we've been looking at our model in wireframe, but it's often simpler to look in OpenGL. Go to View, Rendering, and OpenGL. In the View, Rendering, OpenGL Options dialog, change the quality to High if it wasn't already, then click OK. But you'll notice that the subdivision still looks faceted. Not to worry, this is just because we have the Edit Subdivision tool active still. If you click the Selection tool instead, the surface then renders much more smoothly. The faceting is only present in the editing mode to make moving around and reshaping a little faster and easier on your graphics card. The geometry it's creating is much higher quality and can be seen if you stop using that editing mode. In the next section, we'll go in-depth into the other edit subdivision modes, what they do, and why you would use them.